poly polygons one and then continue. Okay, some highlighters ready to go. Uh, types of triangles. <clears throat> and uh, we have our scalene, which is uh, all sides are different. And all sides are different. So that's the, and by the way, if you, if you ever see that all angles are different, you don't even need to figure out the sides. You know the sides are all going to be different. All right, guys, there's, there's a relationship, right? Um, so let me just zoom in so you can see it. Okay, so this would be perhaps a triangle that looks something like that where this side is different than that side is different than that side. And so you have mark all different markings there. And if you want to go specific, this angle here would be different than this angle here, which would be different than this angle right here. So you're going to make three of those. Okay, so that's a scalene triangle. And we'll do trig when we talk about trigonometry. We'll basically um, make reference to that as well. Isosceles triangle, two congruent sides and two congruent angles. Okay. If you have if you have one known angle, you can find the rest. That's basically my saying there, right? So, for example, if you notice. If you notice, oh, these two sides are the same, okay? Then you should immediately think of the fact that the, the angles across them, right, this angle here will be congruent to the angle across the other side that has the same length, okay? So those, those angles across them are the same. So we can confidently say, hey, if this is 72, Based on what I've just observed, this has to be 72 as well. Right? And so angle Y would essentially be 180 minus 2 times 72. Angle Y. So I know this is review, but there it is. Okay. So when it's an isosceles triangle, you only need one angle and you have them all. Okay. All three angles are known at this point. Um, notice the one on the side there, right? I still, I noticed that, hey, these two, these two sides are the same. They measure the same. Therefore, a lot of students, oh, 50, 50, it's going to be 50 somewhere else. Like, no, no, no. This side, right, that angle across from that side will be the same as the angle that's across the other congruent side. So, in a sense, if you wanted to find angle F or angle E, it doesn't matter because they're the same, right? Angle F would be 180 minus the 50 in brackets, right? And that difference you would split in half, okay? So, angle F would be 130 divided by 2 which is 65 degrees. Angle E is also 65 degrees in, that, in this case. Right? So you can now say, hey, I only knew the 50, but because it's an isosceles triangle, I know that this is 65 and this is 65 also. That comes in handy, you'll see later. Not just this unit, but also trig, right? So don't forget the that property. Okay. So you either see two congruent angles or two congruent sides with the markings, you know it's an isosceles triangle. Uh, then we have our equilateral triangle, right? All angles are congruent and all sides are congruent. It doesn't matter 
how big or how small an equilateral triangle is, the angles are always 60 degrees, right? Because you split 180 into three, okay? so it's 60. So this, these sides would all be the same, and the angles across them would also be the same. Okay? It doesn't matter how big you make it, how small. It's always going to be 60 at the angle. So that's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's not news to you. Um, but it's worth reviewing, okay? You make sure you have that. Uh, polygon, that's, uh, I wish I would have made it a little bigger, right? But uh, polygons is where we're at now. That's where we're going to park. But nothing that we've learned so far is going to go away. It's going to kind of, we're going to integrate what we've learned. What's a polygon? A closed shape with the same number of sides and angles. You have a, something we call convex. That's what we're going to work with uh, mostly versus concave. And just think of it's caving in, right? It's uh, this shape right here. It caves in like that. So uh, something that's unique about concave is that you have a half a reflex angle. Okay, that's how you know some uh, uh, polygon would be concave. Okay, so polygon, basically any shape you've learned about that has straight sides connected is a polygon. A triangle is a polygon. A, a rectangle, a square, any of those are considered polygons. So that's like the general umbrella name for all of them. Okay. Um, here is something that is very important. How do you know the difference between a regular, so a regular polygon versus irregular polygon? That's important to know. And this is how you know something uh, polygon is regular. All sides are congruent. They're equal in length. All angles are congruent. Okay, that's how you know a polygon is regular. Okay, um, irregular. You can say that some angles may be congruent. Some sides may be congruent but the fact is all right it's all if it's all of them are congruent then we have something that we call a regular polygon if some or none right then it would be considered irregular so as soon as one angle is different it jumps from this category to this category right or one side length is different it jumps to this so here you have your basic um, examples right an equilateral triangle would be considered a regular polygon. A square would be considered a regular polygon because all angles are 90, right? And all sides measure the same, right? Same with the equilateral triangle. If you have an isosceles, An isosceles triangle is, is considered irregular because this side is different, right? The base in this case is different, so it's, it, it fails the test. A scalene triangle definitely is going to fail the test. Right? A rectangle. Watch a rectangle. All angles are the same, correct? They're always 90, but not all the sides measure the same, so it doesn't fit the regular category. Okay? So that's how you distinguish. And this is just a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral is uh, the name for a four-sided, right? Four-sided shape. So if we, if we don't have a specific name for it and it has four sides, we just call it quadrilateral. Even though a rectangle and a square also fit the quadrilateral umbrella, but these are specific names for those shapes. Okay. 
let's keep going. We're going to look at some formulas here now. Now that we've distinguished between convex and concave and what a regular polygon is versus irregular, now we're going to study further. But we're going to primarily work with regular polygons. Okay. So follow me. Okay. Before we move on, this is very important here. Uh, all polygons have interior, an interior and exterior angles. Okay. The interior and exterior angles are supplementary. That is what I'm going to highlight there. The interior and exterior angles are supplementary. Okay. So if you have, uh, you can use a pencil. I'm going to use a different color here. But at any at any point, at any corner of this shape, you can, you can go to it. I'm going to go right here. And if you focus on this side here, and you just keep extending that side outwards like that, uh, you've actually created what we call that exterior angle here. Okay. And on the inside, The inside is what we call interior. So watch this. If you continue this, this is what we call the interior angle. That's the exterior angle, right? And you can tell that they're supplementary, right? You can tell they're along a straight angle. Let's keep going with this pattern. So you go to this corner, let's say. Can I just say something? Every corner only has one exterior angle. Uh, two. Like sometimes students are like, well, can I go this way and that way? The answer is you pick, right? It's either or. But I'm going to, for example, just focus on this side and just when you get to the corner, just keep going. Make a straight line out of that base in this case. So that's my exterior angle. And the interior is inside the shape, right? You want to do it one more time? One more time. Let's go to this corner here. That's the exterior. That's the interior. Then go to this corner up here. Right? That's my exterior. And that's my interior. I'm going to do it one more time. You, I know you said, like, I thought you said that earlier. I think I want to make a point right here. Before I move on. So the main, the main point here is that um, interior angle, right, plus exterior angle is always going to be equal to 180. You can bank on this. And from this, we have two formulas that resolve from this. Right? Watch this. If you wanted to know the exterior angle, you can just go 180 minus I. Or if you want to find the interior angle, you can go 180 minus E. Right? So either one of those are helpful at times. Right? It's a straight angle. Watch this. Count. Let's count the sides. So I'm, I'm, wherever I start counting, I make a check mark. One, two, three, four, five. Five sides. Right? How many interior angles? One, two, three, four, five, right? Five interior angles. And how many exterior? One, two, three, four, five, five as well. That's why I wanted to uh, draw the exterior angles all around it. Okay? So there are five sides, five interior, five exterior. See that pattern, right? It's always true, by the way. 
triangle, three sides, three angles. So, all right. Um, this is important here. Watch this one right here. The sum of exterior angles is always 360. Very important. The sum of exterior angles is always 360. Regardless of regular or irregular, regardless of the number of sides. Isn't that interesting, right? Um, do I want to go there right now? I think I will. So watch this. If you make a triangle, let's make a, a triangle that has 60, 60, and 60. That's called an equilateral triangle. We know it's a regular shape, right? Let's go and make our exterior angles real quick. So you go to this side, expand that. This would be 120, correct? Because 60. All right. And you go to the next side here. This would be 120. Then you keep going, travel, continue there. This would be 120. What do the exterior angles add up to here? 3 times 120. Sum of exterior angles is 360. Yeah. One more. Ready for this? It's going to blow your mind. Not. But a rectangle, 90, 90, 90, right? So how do we do this, Mr. Eric? Just pick a side, okay? Pick a side, travel along it, and when you get to the corner, extend it. There's also a 90 here. Then travel along that side, right? Instead of turning the corner, you extend it. That's a 90. Keep traveling. That's a 90. Keep traveling. That's a 90. Four times 90. Anybody? 360. Right? Some of exterior angles is again 360 so this goes on and on and on okay doesn't matter what shape it's always 360 right? 360 360 pentagon hexagon heptagon nonagon right they're all going to be 360 this property is very important Okay, now formulas. Uh, let's keep going here. Formulas, um, N is the number of sides. Remember that, that's very important. And here are the formulas that I want you to add to your formula sheet. Okay. So I'm gonna box this whole thing in. I'm going to add to this or highlight a few things that are important to note. Okay. So S stands for, watch this, sum, right? S stands for sum. So if you wanted to know the sum of all interior angles, this is the formula you use. If you want to calculate the measure of each interior angle, right, then you take, watch this, you copy that. You take the sum of all the interior angles and you just divide it by the number of sides to get that. Um, but this would only, you can only do that if it's a regular polygon, right? If every angle inside that shape is the same, that's the only time. It's like an equilateral triangle, right? 180 divided by three. You can do that because you know every angle is the same. Watch this. C is called uh, the measure of each. Oh, something went wrong there. I do make mistakes. You know that, right? Uh, C is supposed to be the measure of each interior. Uh, cancel off, uh, scratch the interior. It's supposed to say central. Sorry, guys. Just when I thought I had it all figured out, this booklet was ready to go, I find another typo. Right? 
so central angle, basically you take 360 divided by n. I'll show you where it is later on, on, on a polygon. So for now, just follow me. E stands for uh, the measure of each exterior angle. Remember, if all the interior angles are the same, then all the exterior angles are the same as well. And so it also works for a regular polygon. So let's highlight the regular part for these three. I call them ice. See that? Ice right there. So those three only work with regular polygons. And D, you will have very few questions on that one. But D calculates the number of diagonals that can be drawn. Okay? So that's how you that's the formula you use. Can I just give you one example? Uh, here's where your artistic skills come in. Let's let's draw a pentagon. So you go roof like this, and then you go down, across, and back up. Hey, that's the best I can do. So diagonals. This is how you would do it. If you were to draw them from here to here, that'd be one diagonal. And then from there to there would be another diagonal. But you can't count the sides. You can't travel along the sides. So that's it. So, so far we've been able to draw two diagonals. Go to this other corner here. One diagonal would be across there. And another diagonal would be there. So that's four running out of colors here. I'm going to use orange. There's only one that hasn't been done yet, which is this one. Right? So, five diagonals can be drawn. Inside a pentagon. Uh, don't think though that the number of sides coincides with the number of diagonals. That's, a, that's not correct. Okay. But I use this formula. You could use this formula to come up with the number of diagonals that can be drawn. One more thing. I just thought of it as I was giving you the formulas. You know how the exterior angle is 360 minus n, right? You could also go or exterior angle is 180 minus the interior angle. If you happen to know that, right, you can just subtract. That is from further up on this same page, right? So you have an option as to how you want to do things. They come in handy sometimes. You also notice that the central angle and the exterior angle have the exact same formula in a sense, right? So that's also something worth noting. So now we're going to put this, these to the test, okay? So come with me. So we're going to you kind of have to consider everything we've just learned on this page for the for the ones we're going to be doing here. This is on 15, okay? Label ice, then calculate. Uh, I tried to do something smart here. Psych, I'm psyched about polygons, but it doesn't quite work. Anyways, never mind. My jokes are not always the greatest. Uh, for the following regular polygons, so we're told they're regular, right? That's important there. By the way, these are the initials of all the formulas I just gave you. Some interior, central, exterior, diagonals, for short. Let's label them, okay? So watch this, guys, carefully. A central angle... Go to the center, of course, make a dot, and then it's up to you. You pick, let's say you want to pick this side here, right? Then you just make sure you connect and make a pizza slice out of it. This is what we would call right there. That would be called a central angle. Okay. 
For an interior angle, I would pick something that hasn't been used for central. So just go here. This would be one interior angle right there. There are five, but I'm just going to label one. And then right next to it, I have an exterior angle. Just make a dashed line, okay? So it's, it's very obvious. So this would be your exterior angle there. So it's asking you to calculate or to label, label those. And now we're going to calculate them all. And you need to be careful with space here. Watch this. This is a simple shape, I know, but the steps you need to watch out. So one, two, three, four, five. N is equal to five. Establish that right away. Because if you have that, you can actually find a bunch of angles now. Okay. So I'm going to figure out the sum of a five-sided shape is 5 minus 2. It calls for n minus 2 times 180, okay, which is 3 times 180, which is 540 degrees. Some students are thrown off by the S of 5, S of 5, right? It's just basically saying, hey, find the sum of a five-sided polygon, and there it is, right? It's five, if you were to add up all the I's here, it's 540 degrees. That's what it's saying. Interior angle of a five-sided shape would be 5 minus 2. It's n minus 2 times 180 divided by n. n is 5. Okay, so you got to watch out there. Clean this up, right? This is 3 times 180 over 5. And we know that 3 times 180 is 540 from up here. So 540 divided by 5. And this gives you 108 degrees. I'm, I'm doing it this way because we might run out of room if we don't. So each individual angle in here measures 108 degrees if this is a regular polygon, all right? I hope this makes sense. A central angle of a five-sided shape, that would be 360, sorry, 360 divided by 5. Let's do that underneath here. C of a five-sided shape. Before we, this is a central angle. This is one of these. Um, does it, it would make sense, right, to take 360 degrees and split it into one-fifth in this case, right? So that central angle is 72 degrees. And then right next to it, I'll do the exterior angle of a five-sided shape. It's 360 divided by 5. Okay, that's going to be exactly the same as the central. Yes, it will be, right? So it's 72 degrees. Question. Could we have known this already after we got this 108? Okay. This 108 is this, right? It's 108. So what makes, what you need to get the 180 out of that, right? Out of this straight angle, you need 72 in here. So we could have done, or exterior is 180 minus interior, so exterior is 180 minus 72. Ah, yeah, sorry, we're good. No. I got this, I got this. There you go. 180 minus 108, because that's the interior angle right here. So we got 72 degrees either way. Either way, regardless of how you do it, they should be the same. I'm running out of room for D, but we already did that on the previous page. Can I, I'm just going to get you to come up here with me right here. Diagonals for a five-sided shape. Uh, what's the formula again? It's N times N minus 3 divided by 2. 5 times 2 divided by 2, that cancels out, so it's just 5 diagonals. 
that's not an angle. That's just literally telling you how many diagonals you would be able to draw inside. And it gets crazy when you get more sides. It gets quite, it gets extensive. So just watch out for that. Okay, okay uh, let's do some highlighting here. This one away is in here, right? The exterior angle, right, the 72 here or the 72 there is right here. And the central angle, this one here, is actually right in here. You got to watch out with the central angle because I'm sneaky on that one. Sometimes it looks like a central angle, but it might actually not be. It might be two central angles if you look at the whole diagram, right? Um, can I ask you to do what I just did here for this shape right there, for that polygon right there? Use your space wisely. So use, the, use everything up here. And so label the three angles, ice, right? Label them. And then calculate them all. Calculate the sum, the interior, central, and so forth. All right? Um, and then I'm going to take it further. I just want you to know how to use the formulas and get the answers right. Because otherwise, everything else will suffer if you don't. So just check. Check to see if you got it right or I got it wrong. Uh, when it's decimals, we round to two decimals, right? So I've got my sum, interior, central, exterior. Did I not do diagonal? Oh, right there, sorry. You see the diagonals right there? 44. If you get a decimal there, you did something wrong, all right? Diagonals should be a whole number. Angles are okay to be decimals, but... Uh... So hopefully that, that went all right. <clears throat> Still have some time. So I want you to now... Don't worry about C right now. C is uh, optional. I want you to go straight to D. <clears throat> you know what those angles are. We have names for them, right? Just watch out for B. I'm a little sneaky with B. Looks like a central. It's, it's in your notes and you have it all figured out. Uh, this here is an interior angle. I don't know if it's important to have a name for it, right? Because then you know it's like, okay, I can I can use the formulas. And when you count, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 sides, right? So right away, you should make note of that, okay? So angle A, you can actually just use this formula, N minus 2 times 180 divided by N. Angle A is 15 minus 2 times 180 over 15. And you might not have shown as much work, but just make sure you don't forget to divide by 15. A lot of students go 13 times 180 divided by 13, right? And then your answer is, is not right. So it's, it's going to be incorrect. So 13 times 180, that's 156. So angle A is 156 degrees, which is the interior angle. Got it. C, I don't know if you can see that, right? But this, right? If this is 156, so is this one, right? Every single, at every single intersection on the inside, that's 156. So C, angle C, is the exterior angle. We can call that exterior angle of this polygon. So you have a choice. You can go 180 
minus 156, right, which is 24 degrees. Or you could have simply gone angle C is 360 divided by 15. You still get 24 degrees, right? You should see that either or, it's up to you. But once you have information, sometimes one is quicker than the other. So angle C is taken care of right here. And then angle B, I kind of warned you already. Maybe you shouldn't have. Well, whatever. But you, you should notice that this, if you if you take only one side, right, this is what we call a central central angle, right? And so I don't know, you want to call it X, right? So angle X is going to be 360 divided by 15, which is 24 degrees. We know that. Angle B is two times 24 degrees in this case, so it's 48 degrees. That's what angle B should have amounted to. And remember, if this spanned over three sides, then you would just divide, right? You just times three, central angle times three. So just watch out for that. Um, I had something like this on the exam and a lot of students just calculated the central angle. So they, I guess they forgot about it. Okay, so let's go backwards. So we're gonna skip this this table right here. I'll tell you, um, this is optional. If you wanna if you wanna practice, uh, I would call this homework optional. This is on page 16, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all filled in. Right. So you know what? forgot about the prefixes. Do you want to write them down real quick, just the prefixes? Triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon, hepta, and the number of sides that corresponds. You're responsible to know up to dodeca, and after that it's just called n-sided polygon. Okay? I can post this uh, if you want, and but I think just write it down quickly and the rest, the numbers you can calculate, it's up to you. Does it skip one? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Do you see that? It goes from ten sides to twelve. I just, like, I guess I won't expect you to know the eleven sided. A lot of students uh, confuse or mix up deca and dodeca, so make sure you you uh, count for that. Right, so nonagon would be nine sided, octagon eight sided. Right? So don't worry about the numbers, just the prefixes and the number of sides. And the rest is uh, up to you. What I like about this chart, I don't know if you can tell exterior and in, uh, sorry, ex interior, exterior, they always add up to 180, no matter where you look. Right? You can tell that they add up to 180, so that's pretty cool. And the sum, the sum of interior angles, that formula works for any polygon, regular or irregular. So remember the formulas that I gave you, the five, ice, right? The middle ones, those only work for regular. The other ones work for any polygon, okay? All right, let's keep going. And you probably have some. So I will just get you started. I probably won't go through every scenario, but if you go to page 17, but if you know your algebra steps and how it works, the arithmetic, you should be fine no matter what I throw at you, okay? So watch this, uh, page 17. The sum of interior angles of a polygon would be uh, 3,060 degrees to determine the number of sides, right? So we know that the sum of an n-sided shape would be n minus two times 180. Don't worry so much about the S of N 
I can just later call it S, right? So basically, I'm going to plug in the 3060 degrees in for the sum that's given, and then it's n minus 2 times 180. I call this one easy to moderate, right? This one isn't that bad. Um, I'm going to use a different color for the steps that I take. So in math, it really doesn't matter how you proceed. I will show you the easiest way. Now, I would get rid of the 180 first and foremost. I would divide both sides by 180 degrees, get rid of that. I would not distribute. Some of you might have been like, oh, distribute, right? You can, but it, it might give you some headaches later. Cancel that out. And then 360, uh, 3060 divided by 180 actually gives you 17. And on the other side, you're left with n minus 2, just like that. Okay. Uh, don't do plug in and, and uh, some students just try numbers until it works. You have to show me the algebra for these types. And so then I would either bring the two over or a lot of you prefer this method. Nothing wrong with it. That's actually what's happening. Okay. So 19 sides. Boom. Done. Probably one of the easier ones. Um, sorry. There. A regular polygon has exterior angle. And exterior angles, or the all the exterior angles, I should say, are 11.25 degrees. Calculate the number of sides. So you got to use this one. This one will be easy as well, fairly easy. Okay. You know the 11.25 replaces that, right? So 11.25 degrees is equal to 360 over N. I introduced the over 1 just so you can see that it's a proportional reasoning scenario, right? So you cross multiply and divide. So it's really 360 times 1 divided by 11.25. That's 32. 32-sided 32 polygon, right? And you could check, right? You could. So 360 divided by 32, you should get 11.25. Uh, but you need to show me the, the steps there. One more. And then I'll just let you uh, start already on the homework. A regular polygon has interior angles. This one is a bit more challenging. Interior angles are 171. Maybe not challenging, but it, it requires some extra work. Uh, calculate the number of sides algebraically. There are two methods of doing this. I'll show you the one that most students would lean towards right away. So here it is. The interior angle of a polygon is n minus 2 times 180 over n. Because right now the pattern is find the formula for the angle that you're given and then work backwards. Some of you might already find a different way, but uh, I'll show you this way. So 171 goes in here. So 171, <clears throat> and it's n minus 2 times 180 over n, like that. I will multiply this side by n, and I will multiply this side by n. So it's going to be a little uglier, OK? So cancel out the ends. So this ends up with 171n on this side. And I will just show this step here. Earlier I told you get rid of the 180, right? Here I will tell you distribute. That's what I will tell you here. You can divide, but here I'll tell you to distribute. So we're going to cross cross it out like that, multiply it out. So 171n is equal to 
180N minus 2 times 180 is 360. I'll bring the N over to this side. So you have 171N. The 180 is positive on the right side. When it comes over, it changes to negative. Is equal to, and on the right side, you have the negative 360. 171N minus 180, that's negative 9N, right? And the other side's negative 360. So just follow what you've follow what you've been taught all these years, right? Just undo what is there. Essentially, you want to isolate for n. However, you do it, it's fine, right? So this cancels out. You get with you get an n, and here you get a 40. So 40 sides. So you can tell this one has more work, right? Let me show you a shortcut. Maybe not shortcut, but I find it easier. Watch. Or, can we find the exterior angle really quickly here? Remember that exterior angle is 180 minus the interior angle, correct? Exterior angle would therefore be 180 minus 171. Exterior angle is therefore 9 degrees, right? Do you remember the formula for exterior angle? Use formula. It's a lot easier. E of any n-sided polygon is just 360 divided by n. So you put this 9 in here. just blew your minds right so much easier some students still prefer this method go for it I don't care I'm not gonna force you 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 just use whatever whatever works for you so watch this 360 times 1 divided by 9 that's 40 sides you pick um, so essentially guys we turned this question into the previous one, right? Where we used the E formula, but we had to do this first. We had to figure out, like you can turn an interior, you can find the exterior just like that, or vice versa, right? So this had to happen first before that. So I don't know, you pick some students like one over the other. I really don't care. I could have shown you what happens, uh, you know, here when you divide both sides by 180, you get a decimal here, and that's fine. It's going to work out all right at the end, but um, I just kind of showed you the cleanest way of doing it. That's it. I'm going to stop there. Um, so for homework, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do this. For homework, uh, just do this one here, this first question, which is the backwards question, plus handout. You, I, I give you a handout, right? And let me just, maybe, it, it is a little scary, maybe, I don't know. So watch, watch on the screen. Um, I will post the key to it. So don't worry about it too much, but I'm telling you this. What kind of a triangle is out here, guys? Isosceles, right? We reviewed how to find angles. If you know one, you actually know all, all right? What angle is B? It's an exterior, right? Interior, exterior. So I just, I just got a little creative and I made it look maybe challenging, but really you know everything. You do know everything, okay? So I'm gonna post this key. If I have time, I'll make a video and I post a video with it, you know, like, subscribe, you know, give it a thumbs up. Uh, but I'm not